Hello, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the recent open beta for Skull and Bones. And I might, towards the end, address some comments from my Sea of Thieves Season 11 review. So sit back, relax, and let's get rolling. <laughs> So, as I said in the intro, the, I'm going to be mainly reviewing uh, the open beta for Skull and Bones, and hopefully this will go into the game, which is supposed to come out this month, like a week from now, or less than a week from now. So, let's start by addressing the gameplay. Uh, the gameplay for Skull and Bones, I was really quite pleased with. I mean, there, there was a few issues with the gameplay, just mostly things I think that I wish they had added that kind of did make the uh, gameplay start to feel a little boring. But I still wasn't quite done exploring the world in the ocean. But I will address all the big negatives towards the end of this review. But as far as gameplay goes, um, it was challenging. Uh, I did find it, it, you know, a wonder, you know, um, being able to sail around. I think... One thing, a minor negative I can bring up now is um, I wish there, you could explore your ship a little bit more. Um, that you could, that there might have been a little tweaking done to like, because there were sometimes like when I went to turn my ship, it either turned really quickly or it took forever to turn. Um, so, yeah. But gameplay-wise, I really enjoy the gameplay. Now let's move on to the graphics. And the graphics for this game are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I mean, there were some teeny tiny minor glitches I saw. Like, things didn't render fast enough. Like, I was sailing up on an island, and then there's like this these trees you can harvest the wood for and um when i was sailing up to it i saw like this rainbow colored sparkly thing for and then it finally formed and rendered into the tree or whatever it was that i could access um I, I kind of wish there was also a little bit of animation for that. Like, when you're going and harvesting, like, you actually see a couple guys jump off the ship and harvest or loot. Um, but I get it. It's for speed because, you know, it, maybe this could be like Sea of Thieves where you could be ambushed. But I, for the most part, was left alone. Which is going to go ahead and move me into the players section of this review. And I only had... I mean, I passed probably a ton of players through my gameplay. But, uh, I mean... I only had four encounters total. Three were on stream and one was off... And, uh, because I did play a little bit of it off stream, but most of the beta that I played, um, let's see, the first encounter, me and the guy were pretty evenly matched, like, I'd almost get him down, and then he'd repair, he'd almost get me down, and then he repaired, he was in the same ship as me, so he was just as fast. I think my damage was going a little bit faster. And if I was able to press him harder 
that would have I probably would have sunk him because that's what kept getting me whenever I was sunk it was because I used a repair kit and it gives you like a minute before you can reuse another repair kit so if you can't run out the clock you're gonna get sunk uh, there was one time in my final stream, uh, we were, I was doing an event, an event that I had done like three times through my open beta and succeeded all three times. And, you know, I'm not mad because I lost out and that I didn't win this one because this would have been my fourth time. I was fine with that. What I wasn't fine with was, um... So you have to sign in to the event, you know, you have to say, hey, you're taking part of it. And then I, there's this one treasure map, it'll float in the ocean, and a crew has to get it. A ship has to get it. Well, the ship that got it was working, it, it seemed like he was working alongside this other ship. But then both ships started attacking me. And every time I respawned in, I was I was main I wasn't far from where they were. They were attacking each other. And then I was trying to get my loot, my stuff from when they sank me, and I was trying to get out of there. And they just kept attacking me every time I got close. And they weren't leaving the area. They I don't know why. I guess they were looking for my loot, which I'm not sure what the deal was there. But eventually, one of them got it. But they kept sinking me over and over again. And then they, they were fighting each other and sailing in the direction of where they had to go turn this thing in. So I'm like, okay, were they working together or not? And why? When I got close enough, do they always turn their attention to focus on me? It's like, oh, we're going to focus on each other. I mean, if you're working together, just say, hey, it's my turn. I'll turn in the map this time. And then you turn the map in next time. Uh, I mean, and then one of the players was dumb and he tried to ask me to join his group. I don't know what his deal was. He, the, this was the guy who didn't get the map after the fact. Because the guy who got the map, he left, like, real quick. Like, he bailed out of there, like, I don't know, a coward or something. Afraid that, because I was, I was going to wait and take him down. Or at least try. But, yeah, the one guy who, after the fact... I was actually in the process of taking him down. I had almost killed him, but he managed to get... Um, ahead of me and then he healed up and for some reason when I was firing on his ship he wasn't in a safe zone and I was doing zero damage and finally he just ran for it and I almost got him killed but he made it to a safe zone so and then I couldn't kill him but um the other, the other time, the third time, and the fourth time, the other two times, uh, one guy gave up. That was the first time I did that legend uh, treasure map voyage. Uh, I had gotten the treasure map, and I thought it was supposed to go to this one outpost, the main outpost where you sell everything. I thought, you're, oh, you're supposed to take it there because there's a big red flag there. And I was heading there. And the other guy was there that was doing the same event. And he waited for me to get there and then immediately came out and started trying to attack me. So I gave him the runaround. Because I had no idea where I was supposed to go. <laughs> Finally, I figured it out. Which, it was all the way back where I had gotten the map. So I was right there. I felt so stupid. But I got there. And then I... He didn't want to cross the open ocean with me. So, yeah, and then the other guy, the one I did offline, similar thing, but uh, when I got the map, and that's the only time I really had an 
any incidents with players. So when I was doing a world event. Um, but yeah, when I got the map, he kept trying to attack me. He kept chasing me. This guy was not afraid to go out into the open ocean. And he kept chasing me. Uh, I used some other ships. I got him to fire on some other ships by mistake. Some NPC ships. Which slowed him down just enough, I guess, to allow me to get into the bay, to the outpost, and buy enough time for me to be in there. And I guess after you're in there for a certain amount of time, it auto-gives you success. Because I immediately was disembarked onto the island and able to go look for the treasure. So, but yeah, um... I, I basically see, like, there's a huge difference between the player base in this and the player base in um, Sea of Thieves. Which, I'll get into a whole debate of Sea of Thieves and Skull and Bones. But coming from Sea of Thieves, I'm just saying, there's a huge difference. And, just a warning. First off, on a one-to-one -one ship, unless you are a big ship, and you are there just to cause problems because you've earned the biggest ship in the game. And you've got all the best weapons. And you're taking out newbies left and right. Or even if you're a part of a... Let's say you and your buddies all have your own ships. And you're just going around like a gang of thugs. Killing whoever you come across. Fair warning. This game does specifically have a thing to report people who are griefing. Something I wish they would throw into Sea of Thieves. Um, I did report the la one of the last people because he was griefing me. Every time I respond and try to get my stuff from my sunken ship, as soon as I picked it up, they had, were sinking me again. Like I said, the two crews were working together to sink me, not even trying to go turn in the map. Because I was sailing north, and the map was supposed to go south. Because that's the direction they finally ended up going. Now, true, when I lost my shit, that was because of the fact I was kind of going to check it out. See, what, what were they doing? I saw them fighting each other, and I thought, okay, here, I'll slip in. Maybe now I can work. You know, against the guy with the map. Uh, you know, and try to get my stuff back. Because he had stolen my stuff the last time I had been boarded by him. And that's the other thing. I I do think they need to fix that. But I'll get into that with the negatives. Um, so, yeah. That's my experience with other players. It's not really a big problem. But sometimes you might run into situations and they do have ways to report people who are doing bad things, unlike other games. Now moving into the story. The story is pretty interesting. Um, I kind of wish there was more to it. Maybe there will be when the full open game comes out, when we actually have the full game. Um... But right now, at the beginning here, you're only dealing with Sirlock, and there doesn't seem to be a lot, like, you can't really, like, unless there's missions I haven't come across yet, there's not, like, different factions in different parts of the ocean that you can team up with. Um, I didn't see any other big quest givers. I mean, there are little things. You've got... All your little side missions that you can do for the blacksmiths or the traders or the shipwrights. They will have little like fetch missions and stuff or go do this. But I'm talking real big story that imprints on the world. Um, so... Let's move into the negatives now. Because, like I said, it's this is a really good game. I've really enjoyed playing it. I don't know if I'll give it a score at the end or not yet. I'm thinking about it right now. But negatives, um, 
The biggest negative is partly in the gameplay. And I kind of wish there were areas like when you're in the outposts or when you go and attack an outpost and you're plundering it. I kind of wish that your ship could auto defend and you could be on the outpost actually fighting. Um, I also wish that when you board, you could help fight in that boarding situation. I wish there was some kind of fighting mechanic, even if you have other crew members, even if NPCs are helping you, I wish you could actually be a part of that battle. Um, I think every other negative I mentioned, but that was the biggest one. There's no sword play. Um, when you dig up treasure uh, anywhere for anything, uh, you don't actually use a shovel. You use your hands and you like dig a little bit and then you start yanking the treasure through the sand. Uh, I wish there was like a little cinematic, even if you don't pan on it, actually doing the digging, just show like a couple clips of your pirate digging up from above and then lifting it out of a hole. Um, I wish we could buy shovels, you know, some things that are just cosmetic and super cheap, you know, but that's just me, I guess. That is where I get in. I can now cross over into my comparison between Sea of Thieves and Skull and Bones. So, is Skull and Bones a replacement for Sea of Thieves? And I'm going to say no. Kind of. Maybe. I don't know. I could see me playing this, playing Skull and Bones. At first, I'm probably going to play it a lot, but then I'm going to get, you know, to the point where I'm going to want to try to go back to Sea of Thieves and see if the player base has cleaned up its act. Because recently, and I talked about this a little bit during my uh, gameplay, Sea of Thieves, that community is very toxic. And I don't mean like all the big people at the top aren't toxic. It's all the players that aren't big. Because the players who are big, the ones you if you play Sea of Thieves, you know who I mean. Anybody who's big and live streaming on Twitch who the actual uh, creators from Rare work with to develop some changes. You've seen them in podcasts with them, like you've seen Hippo, you've seen, you've heard them talk about Fuzzy Bond, uh, you've heard them talk about Boxy. All these people, they are the best people in the community. But I have seen a lot of comments and threads recently on so many different things. That say, I was looking at this and I was ki I was turned away by the Sea of Thieves community. So many things that me and my buddy have looked at where it does not make the community for Sea of Thieves look inviting. Why do you, why do the people uh, that play Sea of Thieves not want more players to play Sea of Thieves? You do realize, and I've said this before, without new players, the game will die. You keep pushing people away. This is not a PvP only game. Sea of Thieves is more than a PvP game. And you are treating players like crap and they're going off to other games and then you sit there and whine when rare doesn't have the resources to put more manpower into the things you want i have always tried to be inviting and i tried to bring more people into this game 
my buddy, I had talked him into, like, he was really excited. But then he hears me go on and on about some of the negative stuff I have happened to me in the game. And he's like, you know what? I, I think I'm changing my mind. I don't want to play that game. So, Skull and Bones, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be much better community. Um, along the lines of, like, hopefully it'll have very similar. I mean, at first, I think it will have a lot of people from Sea of Thieves are going to come over and try this game. They are the core audience. Also, a lot of people who are fans of Assassin's Creed Black Flag are probably going to come over. Hopefully, we're going to get some people... A majority, hopefully, in the long run, that will come over from more inviting games like Destiny and Final Fantasy XIV and World of Warcraft. Um, those three games, Destiny, Final Fantasy XIV, and World of Warcraft, seem to be the three biggest communities I've come across that are the most inviting to new players. That will actually do what it takes to get people to come into the game. I know this because my buddy, he's constantly trying to push Final Fantasy XIV on me. And if that was my type of game, I might be willing to try it. But I'm not really into the Final Fantasy games. I've only ever really played Final Fantasy X. And... I think that's about it. Maybe 11 or 12. I don't even remember. Um, I know I wanted to try playing uh, Final Fantasy X2. But I never got the chance to. Because I mainly just wanted to know the story. Like did Titus return or what? You know. But uh, no. From what I gathered from multiple resources. Sea of Thieves. The Sea of Thieves community is not inviting. And this leads me to how would I compare Sea of Thieves to Skull and Bones? Well, it's very simple. Skull and Bones is Star Trek. Sea of Thieves is Star Wars. Enough said. I mean... With Skull and Bones, you have more, it's really morally focused on that aspect of naval combat, strategizing, preparing your ship, and going on, you know, runs and quests, or, you know, seeking out your own fortune by building up your own fleet, your own uh, crew. I mean, that's the other thing I do wish that it did have was a way to interact with your crew from time to time to help boost morale. Uh, also, to hire on more crew members and stuff. Give them more experience. I wish there was a way they could interact with that besides just having, like, some basic sword battling coming in. I would like to see that added, too. Some ways to deal with your crew dealing with your crew besides just changing their outfits which aside from looking which you hardly ever see your crew um maybe you could also have a relationship with one of your crew members like uh if you're a male your first mate is female and i'm guessing if you're female uh your first mate is male Maybe they can make it way you can change that. So the first mate is whoever on your career you develop a, the strongest relationship with. And that could be a romantic relationship. But that's all stuff they can do down the road with DLCs that they can add on. Um, but that is why I say it's like Star Trek, though, because it is more basically focused on the sailing around, fighting other ships. And this world, 
that they gave you, it feels more alive. It feels like it's fully, it's a real life. You know, they have merchant ships and battleships that sail around. And God help you if you accidentally bump in or fire at a battleship. If you accidentally do that, then it's going to turn on you. And it could be very bad if you're not prepared. Whereas Sea of Thieves... It develops more on the fighting. It revolves more around the island exploration and doing things off the ship. Yes, you have to have a ship to go from island to island, but typically most of the things you do in Sea of Thieves revolves around you not being on your ship. So you actually can go explore the full islands. You can dig up stuff on the islands, which is kind of why I say it's like Star Wars, because Star Wars isn't always heavily focused on the space battles. Yes, it does have the space battles, but it's more focused on the characters and the things that are going on with the characters, rather than making the ship the primary source you know like in next generation the enterprise in next generation it felt like it was part of the cast it wasn't just the crew members it wasn't just the captain and yes stuff went on with them but the ship was there too. The ship was in danger. They had a lot more space battles. Uh, same thing with Voyager. With Deep Space Nine. I mean, the station was always really important to that part of the story. You felt like the station was an entity, you know. That's where some really good stuff comes in. Which is kind of what I feel like here. Your ship is part most of your story. It's where you're going to spend most of your time. You're not spending it on these islands. You're only on the islands to get what you need and get back to your ship. So you can sail around. Now, with that said, let's look at the longevity here. Unless there's some major updates and some major add-ons to Skull and Bones, I feel like Skull and Bones, it's going to be good as long as you've played through the main story. And I think once you're done playing through the main story, you might come back and revisit it to do all the side missions here and there. But you probably will be okay with taking a break for a while. Until some major story update or DLC is added. Um, similar to the way of... Like like I mentioned before, Destiny. Um, I also... I didn't hear anybody talking. So, like, I don't... I, they kept getting this message about something being disabled. So, I don't know if that was disabled for the open beta... But it will be interesting to see how the communication will work with other people once you uh, once the game goes completely live. Alright, so I am still really excited to actually get to play the game. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now... I wanted to address some of the comments that came from my Sea of Thieves Season 11 review. I was going to make a part two to this, so you consider this the part two. Um, first off, one person commented about what I said when it came to like the Siren Skull quests and stuff. And I just want to be absolutely clear that when I was saying that about the Skull of Siren song, I was mainly talking 
about how, like, if you already got Briggsy's coat and mask, there wasn't anything else you wanted to do. You got the mask, you got the coat, now the only reason you do it is for some quick cash. That's it. Nothing else. Um, and these kingly chests and stuff, yes, they are nice. And they do make the money for getting you reputation in the guilds. Merchant Alliance, uh, Order of Souls, Gold Hoarders. You're going to get reputation by getting this stuff. But you were going to get that before. You might get a little bit more now. But that isn't really worth, like, I mean, that's not really going to keep people interested, I think. The entire reason people were interested in doing them in the first place was to basically reach Pirate Legend. Once you reached Pirate Legend and you had access to Athena, a lot of players, I would say on confidence, 75%. Of the player base of Sea of Thieves didn't care how fast they leveled up the rest of the those three once they had the ability to go seek out the uh, Athena's fortune. Once they could get that uh, voyage that lets you go battle the island and get the chest of legends that's what everybody was after that's the quest everybody wanted to do why because the chest of legends for the longest time was the most valuable treasure even this new stuff as far as i know still is not as valuable as a chest of legends and the chest of fortune is above that and the siren skull is above that if it's money you're after, you can easily go get it, the Skull of Siren's Song. And you get a lot of gold for it. So what I'm saying, with all that, is they need a reward system to inspire people to work towards, like, okay, I am still working towards the... Um, Unlocking, I think it's like 500 vaults. Unlocking 500 captain's quarters. When I do that, I get a special sales added to my ship's inventories. Or added to my inventory worth all my ship stuff. So I can put it on my freaking ship. That is what I'm talking about. Have it where there's like, you got to get a thousand pieces. And I say a thousand because... 500 pieces is going to be too short of a number. And people are going to hit it like that within a month. They'll pro If they grind hard enough, they will hit it within a month. So make it maybe two months. Now, I also got a comment about what I said about the hourglass. And I just want to make this perfectly clear. The base curses for the hourglass rewards should be brought down to 50. 50 and you gain access to the special area and you get the curse. Either the skeleton curse or the ghost curse. The reason I say this is because A, Reapers were screwed over hard. Really hard by Rare. With... The hourglass. Because you had to get the door. You had to get your reapers up to 75. Which is already difficult. Because reapers are visible on the map. And they can be targeted. By every player. <coughs> so if you're a player like me. Who doesn't want to be hounded. And targeted. And seen all over the map. While you're just trying to build up your reaper reputation. Then you're probably going the much slower route where you don't have an emissary flag and you're going to get less rep but you're going to turn in a lot more treasure so make certain treasures worth more like anything ashen 
Um, bring down in the Servants of Flames, bring down the curse to level 50. In access to the Reaper's Den, down to 50. Why 50? Well, let me... It's basically... I mean, sorry to say it like this, but it's basically your classic drug dealer tactic. Drug dealers, often, they'll give you something for free. But then you got to pay for the rest. It's just like any business. A lot of businesses use that. Oh, get this seven-day free trial because they want you to try it out. And then they want to hook you in and get you into more. So do that with the PvP players. Give them something easy and great to access. Which may hook them into wanting to do it more. But if you make it too hard, people who don't care already are going to care even less. Like I said, I think I said this in my video, I was watching Hippo one morning and he was asking people about the hourglass and at least 65% to maybe 80% of his chat of the people who watch him said they don't care about hourglass. They all have low numbers. Which is not good for your hourglass players. You want to know why you keep battling the same people? You want to know why it takes forever to matchmake? Because not many people care about hourglass. And it's going to die. If they don't have enough people, it's just like what happened, what I heard happened about arena. I wasn't playing then. So I have only heard stories about this. But what happened with Arena is going to happen to Hourglass. So, if that's what you want. It, and, you know, the thing is, why should Rare care about Hourglass? Because, I mean, apparently the players really don't. They just go around attacking people. They want to do PvE. Uh, sorry, PvP. But they don't want to go into the Hourglass. They just want to attack anyone on the server. You can tell me a million times that this is a sandbox and you can play any way you want. That's true. But then why should they work on making better rewards or better systems for the hourglass? Because you clearly don't care about it to begin with. So why do you care if they lower the points and make it easier to get people in? And like I said... Once they get to level 50, if they like having the curse, now they got to work towards the upgrades. Because with the ghost curse, you can wear whatever you have on. You, The only thing is, I think at, what, 200 points, you get the gold colorization. I mean, maybe if they had different colors along the way to gold, but... They only have the original and then the gold. And I don't see a lot of people sporting the gold look. Not to say people probably don't have it. I just don't see a lot of people using it. In fact, I don't see a lot of people using the ghost curse at all. Oh, I'm sure there are. There probably are. Plenty of you out there that do. All of like 20 of you. But if you let people get it at a quicker pace, then they're going to want to try. And then they're going if they're that deep in, they might say, okay, well, let me keep doing this. I'm actually starting to like it. And if you ever want to question me about whether or not Sea of Thieves is a good community to play with, try playing Open Crew. I've played it a couple times, and every time I have been severely, severely disappointed. Either I get people who don't speak my language, or don't have mics and can't communicate with me, so I have to communicate 
with like emotes like do this emote if you hear me do this emote for yes do this emote for no or something you know or one sword slash for yes two sword slash for no you know something crazy along that line or they're just straight up trolls who are there to ruin your day in which case why are you even playing the game Seriously, if your goal is to come into Sea of Thieves and just ruin it, you're no better than the people at freaking Disney who are making Star Wars bad. And you are trying to kill this game just like Disney is trying to kill the franchise of Star Wars. Because Star Wars was doing just fine before. It had thousands, millions of fans. But those fans, a lot of those people have left and have, it's been slowly diminishing over the years because of all the crap Disney has done. So, yeah, that was the other comment, by the way. Uh, somebody asked, why should they make it easier? Why should they lower it? Because he said, why should it be lower to cater to bad players? First off, they're not bad. They just, they're not into it. They're not into doing the straight up PvP that you want. I'm not horrible at PvP, but I'm not great. And nobody's trying to help me get any better. This, this community is, like I said, very toxic. And they really want to push everyone out of the game. I mean, here I had one comment from the guy, from a guy who played the first beta, and he said he quit Sea of Thieves after two months of season nine because of all the cheaters and grifters. And I can completely agree with that. And then I have another comment here. And this comment really got on my nerves. This one guy commented saying that Ubisoft takes seven years and goes through five different descriptions and announcements through the years only uh, to become the biggest... Well, I'm not going to read that part, but uh, you get my point. And then, he, then after he's saying it took them over seven years to finally get to where they are now, he says they couldn't even copy and paste Black Flag. So I'm trying to understand this guy's comment. He wants them to hurry up and put out a game by copying and pasting from another game. So... Then, if they had done that, then he would have been saying, oh, they rushed this game out too quickly, and it wasn't even done, and it's just a copy of Black Flag. So, this guy's not happy either way. It This comment just felt like this guy had a huge prejudice against Ubisoft. Because, I mean, hey, you know what? At least Ubisoft is actually trying really hard to get this game as great as it can be before putting out. Unlike other games who, like, if you think about, like, CD Projekt Red and what they did with um, Cyberpunk or the company that made No Man's Sky, the people who made No Man's Sky promised so much and none of that was in the original game. The Cyberpunk game by CD Projekt Red has so many freaking problems at launch most players found it unplayable. Now, I didn't have a problem and I played on the PS4 Pro but I know a lot of people played on PC or older PlayStation 4s, and they were having tons of problems. <coughs> I didn't have an issue, but 
I think maybe it glitched up once and I just restarted and I had no problems after that. I actually got through the game a couple times because I tried different ways of going through Cyberpunk, but that is my part two of my season 11 review. If you want to hear more thoughts on that, like I say, go check that out. I explained in full why I was very disappointed with season 11. It's not the worst, but it's not great. And I feel like it could be better. It, it can improve. Um, the last thing I do want to say about this and Sea of Thieves, though, um, in that video, in my Season 11 review, I had said that I had wished they would add a new area in an upcoming season. And I thought of something I talked about in one of my previous uh, playthroughs of Skull and Bones. And that is that I wish if they were to add this new area that we would get two new world events. And these world events, I feel like, would require pirate crews to really work together. Um, the first event is a convoy. At some point, somewhere, you will be alerted that a convoy has appeared. And it's about to set sail from an outpost. Now, if you go and you try to take this convoy out on your own, no matter what ship you have, you will fail. This convoy is going to be that dangerous. But the rewards, the payout from this convoy will be immense. And why is this important? Why did I say two world events? Because after three convoy attempts, a new challenge will begin. And you will have the ability, you will have a reason to fight this big fortress in the northern area. Now, if you stop all three convoys from reaching the fortress... And you bring down the ships with every other pirate crew on the server. Then you have a very good chance of easily taking down the second event. If you do not, they will have supplies. And you will not. They will use those supplies against you if you try to attack. Or you can just let it go. But I was thinking they could add in some really good rewards. Like, there is always a chest of fortune. There is always a chest of legends. There is always, like, an ashen chest of legends. Um, lots of kingly loot. So, a big treasury, basically, that can easily be split up amongst the crews if you all work together. If you're working together, now you could try to betray each other after. That's completely up to you guys. But, I mean, there are, like, three different loot rooms. So, like, you gotta space out people. And one player going to each room from one ship isn't probably going to be able to take out the other players who are going to be going to that room. So they got to make it where you kind of got to spread out to board and load all the treasure. And you got to keep someone on the ships. And plus there's a time limit because reinforcements will come in to clean up in a certain amount of time if you don't get out of there. So, I mean, it's basically get it in, it's basically a steal, you know. You go in, you attack, you steal, because now the treasuries are full, and they're waiting for their pickups, and you've got so much time before the pickup ships get there. And if you are there when the pickup ship arrives, because the pickup ship, let's say, is a man of war, your whole crew is dead. So you got like, I don't know, five minutes. 
and you got to hit all three rooms. And this is something so big that it will actually require the crews to work together, which is what pirates, believe it or not, actually did. They worked together. Like the mafia, like some gangs work together to achieve an ultimate goal. So that would be my idea of a really good addition to Sea of Thieves. That would actually make you feel more like a pirate and not just a psycho murdering thug. Like most people, I think, honestly should feel like in Sea of Thieves. Because it's not Sea of Thieves. I mean, thieves are more about stealing, not about killing. Which is why the greatest thief in all of the game of Sea of Thieves is probably Hippo TC, because that is his primary focus. He doesn't really go in wanting to kill you. He just wants to steal your treasure. And if you get in his way and you leave him no option, he will kill you. But anyways, that is going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, did you play the beta? What did you think? Are you looking forward to the full game's release of Skull and Bones? I know I am. I hope they make the changes that I talked about. And I hope Sea of Thieves makes the changes that I've talked about. Because I think it would be really, really good for that game and help keep it alive. Especially the two big world events. Which I think would be epic. And I think players are going to love it. Because everybody gets a chance at treasure. And each treasury room will have so much treasure, you don't have to be greedy about it. You gotta be quick about it. Which means no fighting amongst each other. Just get in. Each crew takes a different room. And that's just the thing. You might only need three ships to take them down. Because it's like two or three galleons and a couple sloops on the cargo runs. So if you could take down, if you got two brigs and a galleon, they could probably do that real quick just by themselves. So, but anyways, that's going to go ahead and wrap this up. I will see you all in the next review. Bye.